Hi, welcome to a new episode of Political Sit Down with DT Next. I am Bijoy Bharatan, Opinions Editor with DT Next. Joining me today on the panel on the special budget edition are Mr. Koteshwaran, political journalist for a very, very long time, and Mr. Karthikeyan, a veteran journalist from DT Next. Today we are sitting down together for our very first session of the post-budget analysis of the 2024-25 budget session. The budget was being seen as an, as an exercise of uh, infusing a lot more liquidity into the economy, getting, uh, getting jobs back onto the market, which was one of the big uh, talking points for the government. It was also about um, getting a lot more people, not, in, not just into the job market, but also uh, rural development and uh, a lot of sectors that had not been addressed yet. So uh, probably to start with, let's get, um, get right down to the brass tacks and ask uh, Koti, maybe to start with, as to what was your takeaway from the budget? Madam, Finance Minister is very keen that the people who work should work more. So if there has to be a major key takeaway from this budget, union budget, which was presented yesterday, I understand that the people who are, that is the 2% of the people pay the income tax. That is almost 20% of the total tax that is generated in this country. So those 2% people should work more and pay more tax. Uh, and the share market has dealt with a serious blow since yesterday. The market went down by more than 1,000 points, but it got back, though it was not a bear market, but the market was flat. So the nutshell in nutshell, whenever Madam Nirmala Sintaraman, this is the seventh consecutive budget presentation. Whenever Madam presents a budget, the market seems to be in a jittery mode. And across the globe, we have elections in the United States. US market is the mother of all markets. And Indian market is next biggest economy that is mushrooming, growing. So, so having said on that, the introduction of uh, STT was done to take away the short term gains. Then the long term gains is there. Then you have tax on dividends. Then you have the STT. So in one stock market, you are taking tax from four different ways. And after investing in stock market, then you have the asset monetization description from Madam Cumming, which means that if you have gold or flat, you already have, and you're going to sell it. The indexation privilege which was given to the public has been taken away, which means that, let me explain it in a very simple way. Um, a father gives some 20 severance of gold to the daughter. The daughter, after some years, sells the gold to another person. What was the gold market back then, some 20 years back? What is the current rate that has been calculated? And to this, inflation is added. You see the inflation, then the capital grain, then there's some math in between. Then after that, a capital gain is understood, which is maybe some 5% or 10%, that is what they've been paying. But now it's a flat, that the inflation is not taken care. So you will end up finally paying more. A person who is selling a gold or a flat may not be actually making capital gains. Sometimes they might be in a very bad financial state and they might sell their ancestral property or the jewelry which they have got as Sidhanam or whatever we call it in uh, South India. So that is going to be like a double taxation because when you purchase the flat or the gold, you paid the taxes. You already paid. And again, it's changing another person. So again, the seller has to pay the tax. And already the buyer again has to pay another tax. Fair. So it is like uh, in, in law parlance, we call it as double jeopardy. Taxing the people left, right and center and again and again. So uh, another classification is asset monetization, Madam has spoken about, is about the PSUs, the public sector companies. They have large lands and utilities. And they say, we want to monetize on that. So we are planning to use the potential use of the land, maybe a stadium or agricultural land or a coastal uh, pocket. For example, uh, Cochin Shipyard, Coal India, they have large tracts of land. So they have a long-term plan of leasing of these areas. So my simple question is that whether, uh, have you seen any big investor or a trader leasing out their land for somebody else? They don't do that. They own their property. But whereas the government properties have been like leased out or uh, given away for corporates as uh, sp special packages or they're coming under special economy zone, all these things are there. But on the other side, 
uh, if you see the CAPEX expenditure is going to be very, uh, to a new extent, they promise that they're going to new, generate new jobs. So there is some sort of green hopes uh, coming from that line. And job security and job employment is a major issue that the country is right now facing. So uh, going global, this is going to increase job opportunities. That is what the government says. So let's hope on that area. But as a journalist, I would have been more happier if there is some direct employment. Like, for example, I'm going to recruit, say, 10,000 people in the railways or some 5,000 people into the BSNL or some other uh, 20,000 people into army. Because right now we are facing a lot of uh, issues from <coughs> Pakistan border as well as the China uh, incursion and all those things. So those kind of direct recruitments would have uh, added more cheers to the young people rather than these kind of three indirect job guarantees that Madam has given. Thank you, Mr. Gautishwan. Kathikeyan, would you like to add to it and tell us what was your primary takeaway from the budget that was announced yesterday? In my opinion, the budget is uh, it's an attempt by Nirmala Sitharaman to strike a balance between uh, fiscal consolidation and political appeasement. But eventually, she has failed on both fronts. That would have been my understanding. On one hand, uh, the budget appears to be showing that uh, the government has learned its lessons from the last 10 years. Particularly, they have acknowledged that uh, unemployment and price rise are the perennial issues plaguing the economy. They have acknowledged that. But the remedies they, have pro they promised to deliver, uh, that's where they have been found wanting. And on the, even on the political basement side, uh, by now we are all in all India. Uh, they call it an Andhra Bihar budget, mm. not a budget for the whole country. So, uh, Nirmala Sitaraman, I would rather say this is a budget prepared at the PMO more than the United Finance Ministry. So, in an attempt to appease uh, Chandrababu Naidu and Nitish Kumar, who hold the government together, who keep the government intact, they try to do something, but even then they have failed miserably. Chadurvabu Naidu sought a financial package of 1 lakh crore and he was right to, I mean, he, he was right in demanding so. Because as per the IAP Reorganization Act, the union government is supposed to support them, uh, provide an incentive or a special package for Amaramati development. Right. And also, uh, Nitish Kumar sought a special package, financial package or special status for Bihar, which is supposed to be the most backward state in the country. I mean, in terms of population, they are among the largest states. So that's, both the states have been given pittance. Uh, when Nirmala Sitaram has prom was only promised 15,000 crore rupees to Andhra, and that too by way of lendings, she said multilateral development, development I mean, agencies like World Bank. World Later Bank. in a press conference, she admitted it would be the World Bank. So World Bank would be lending 15,000 crore. It Compared to the 1 lakh and odd crore she demanded, he demanded, Chandrabhav Naidu demanded, this is pittance. And even then, this would only add to the outstanding debt to a state which is already reeling under severe financial distress. Mm. So 15,000 crore, how he would develop a state uh, capital and influx man, uh, investment, uh, ensure investment to promote the infrastructure of the state, that's a big question. Okay. And second thing, even for Bihar, they have announced a package of roughly 59,000 crore, I believe so, 58,900 or something. And most of it would go into infrastructure development, railways, road projects, and flood mitigation and everything. Even then, there is no solid assistance. Most of it, I think, I believe would come from lending agencies like World Bank and Asian Development Bank. But where, how would these, uh, the states cope up? And from this 15,000 crore, how would they augment in the forthcoming financial year? Hmm. And the same applies to Bihar. Okay. That's a real, I, I'm pretty sure Nitish Kumar and Chand Chandrababu Naidu would be deeply disappointed. Compared to what they expected and what was promised, they strike, try to do something to appease their political partners or the partners who are holding the government, keeping the government alive. But they have failed even miserably on that front. Even on, if I may elaborate, uh, even on the uh, uh, unemployment front or the job creation front, they have acknowledged the problem, but the solution offered is completely skewed. Okay. Uh, what they, they have borrowed a few from the Congress manifesto and announced some employment linked incentives and also some subsidies programs hmm. to generate jobs. But most of the incentivization seems to happen only on the supply side. Hmm. The problem really happens to be on the demand side. Hmm. People are not buying. Absolutely. And when they are not buying, when people are not consuming more, the industry does not produce more. Understood. When the industry does not produce more, they does not engage people. This has been the problem for the last decade. 
this is where uh, modi government or nirmala sitaraman who are it may be even jarn jaitley for that matter they fail to acknowledge the problem the problem is with people people don't have the money hmm. unless they buy you don't produce unless they don't produce they don't employ more people the same thing happened during covid they announced a financial fiscal stimulus package of 20 lakh crore right and everyone wanted the government to pay the give the money to the people directly absolutely, absolutely. instead they gave it to the corporates india inc hoping that they would generate jobs and keep the cycle going what's a cycle running but it didn't happen and 5 years ago you reduced the corporate tax and again it was reduced recently from 30 to 22% which is the lowest in the world nowhere in the world the corporate takes the taxes at 22% you pegged it at 22% hoping that it would incentivize the in I mean corporate india and they would they would invest more and the capex would flow in and it would produce more and it would more to produce more jobs it didn't happen where did the investments go where did the jobs go nothing happened whereas the corporate india used that money and in the a rough estimate suggests that they incentivized corporates by reducing corporate tax to the tune of 1.45 lakh crore every year no. which works out to roughly 8.7 lakh crores in the last 5 years including all but the jobs were not generated and the investment did not flow in all they all use all this money to pay dividends and profits to themselves okay so enough. the government doesn't seem to realize it again they are pumping in money to incentivize the corporates the yeah. employers and not the employees only when the jobs or i mean when when people are recruited you will have people coming in absolutely only when the industry absorbs them you will pay the the first salary of 15000 or you will pay the 3000 rupees 2000 rupees i mean 3000 rupees for the next two years unless the market does not and the market does not absorb people or generate jobs who are you going to pay absolutely when there is no demand how will you generate those jobs this is something this is an area where uh, the government uh, seem to have I mean missed the woods for the trees understood and that was actually quite an interesting point that kartikeyan mentioned that you know uh, the jobs will not come in until there are there is exit there is a certain so called you know um, demand for jobs as such and you do not create that until you know there's actually some sense of uh, a corporate confidence in most of india inc and which also brings us to the point of tamil nadu which is supposed to be one of the most industrial states in india uh quotation what do you think that you know tn in tn's losses with regard to you know this budget see two important key states have been contributing to the growth of this nation to a large extent one is maharashtra then tamil nadu if you see the tax contribution together with the southern states and maharashtra put together it will easily contribute more than 50% but what has these southern states and maharashtra has got from this budget uh, madam has not even mentioned the names of these states in in our full length speech most of the states names has been missing meaning there is no specific state specific projects coming in it is all industrial corridors connecting from one city to another city Correct. and whenever there is a budget presentation is made the impact is usually felt after two years or three years or something like that but when it comes to imposition of tax it comes into immediate effect so rather than seeing it as what state has gained uh i think we should see two important uh, classification of people within these states one is the middle class considered to be the darling of the bjp there have been certain research journals saying that how middle class has always embraced bjp the th- second one is the common man or the poor who is who thinks otherwise okay what is there for me in the budget so to to give it in a nutshell the, for the middle class it's this budget is is not a very happy budget uh of course okay the cost of gold is coming down because of the import duty has been reduced uh, to 6% from its previous high of 12 and 15 on the other hand that will boost the jewelry sale but uh, most of the viewers or ourselves are not going to b- go buy the gold every other day Absolutely. or the platinum or the uh, the other diamond rings but what we are going to do or buy every day in our daily life is the plastic and polythene what i'm wearing is a plastic what i wear is a pen my pen is a plastic this Absolutely. mic is a plastic everything is a plastic there is a pl- the cost of plastic is going to go up Absolutely. so what is happening is the major chunk for example certain chemicals like uh, ammonium nitrate and all those things also they considerably they very carefully watched where exactly the bulk amount of the volume is getting traded there they have imposed increase the tax mm-hmm. what is very least or very considered to be a niche area where, where the filthy rich people buy all those things so that is being the cost is brought down 
So to, for example, there's another key example, rare earth minerals, Correct. some more than uh, close to two dozen minerals cost is going to be covered. We are not going to deal with copper, nickel and uh, uh, ferrous or uh, uranium, thorium on a daily basis. These are like for large scale contractors mining, using the proclaims and all those things, operating the quarries round the clock, fighting against the state government, central government, uh, against the environmental norms. So you understand the picture from where it is going to. The another thing is about the special packages to Bihar and Andhra. Okay, promises have been made like about new ports, new buildings. And of course, everybody knows where, who is the person who is constructing the ports. Absolutely. Obviously, it is the big corporate. <laughs> and most of the time, Rahul Gandhi says Adani is the friend of the government. Modi. So, should I take it as whether the, the new port is going to go to Andhra government okay. or the Andhra people or to the Adani? Mm -hmm. So, this is something where the corporates are like given uh, happy news. The capex expenditure to a large crores of crores amount means that more and more contractors are going to get benefited. So the common man is the petrol contribution, which is around 120% tax is being, that is what we spent on the fuel. So whether that one or the GST, what we pay by eating, eatly, sambar, biryani or whatever, or the income tax, which is again uh, very high, or the, the share market cost, the Fair. charges. So everything is going to go into these bridges, these constructions, which every 10th day or every second month we feel falling. So we are the people who are going to sponsor those things. We are the people who are going to sponsor these clogged drains and the very bad roads and all those things. So for that, uh, this kind of taxation is, is happening. Uh, in fundamental, if you see for the common man, uh, certain things they promise it's going to become cheaper, like for example, cell phone and chargers. And these are products which we buy once in two years. But when it comes to the uh, farmer's demand of uh, uh, the minimum support guarantee hmm. or the cost, for example, uh, just a bag of uh, rice, which is, uh, 25 kilos, which is now parcel, attracts GST. If Madam could have just removed that, the cost of my Italy biryani would have come down. <clears throat> so the problem is they fail to understand the effect of inflation. Uh, let me give another example. What used to be the cost of biryani some four or five years back should be around 110 to 130 in a small, small hotel or a small food outlet. If it, you take it to a little bigger restaurant with the air conditioning or maybe to a bigger a star, star hotel. hotel, it should be 250 to 300, that's it. But today it's completely doubled Understood. over the last four, five years. But whether the income, personal income has been doubled, no. Understood. And this 50,000, the standard tax deduction has been there for more than a decade. Okay. And from there you're giving 75,000. So how would translate into a salaried class person is like you're going to get some two check two five hundred rupees a month or maybe even less than that what are you going to do with it Understood. you are spending in thousands and lakhs for this government and what you get back is like uh, uh, say some uh, 500 for certain kind of people who are earning between some 10 lakhs or 7 lakhs and it's going to be some 800 to 1000 for a bigger people so uh, what are you going to say so and of course uh, all these things are in my view uh, there's no money coming to the common man, the common man. or the middle class. Understood. The most of the money will be going to people either who don't pay taxes or people who evade taxes. Mm. So the more the tax regimen is strict, and they say they have simplified the tax, simplified the tax. This is not the simplified tax. I'll give another mm. example. For example, I have a vehicle. I pay the petrol. For that, there's a different tax lab. That doesn't come under GST or IT. Mm. It is the value added tax. Understood. Then I have the educational CIS again. Right. Then I have the toll charge. Then I have the insurance which comes with the 18% GST. Then uh, I have the, the state transport payment charges when I register the bike or the car. So for, for traveling, I'm spending five types of tax. What is this? So is this not a simple thing? So, so all these parents should have been addressed in the budget and it's only making matters more complicated. And even people to, who, who are aware of budget terms and nuances find it difficult. It took more than, uh, uh, we haven't read the full copy of the budget and all these are abstracts. So oh, how right. it pans out is something uh, which we have to wait and watch for. Actually, that's an interesting segue you brought in, Kote, about transport, because one thing which was conspicuous by its absence <clears throat> was a railway budget, which I had a previous discussion with, with Mr. Karthik, who was very, very strongly felt yeah. about it. Would you like to share it with our audience, Mr. Karthik? True, Vijay. That too in the backdrop of uh, two fatal railway accidents. accidents. One claiming at least 300 lives, another recently claiming 10 lives, I believe. The contingent workers. So more was expected of this government uh, to invest in Kavach or any anti pollution device to augment the safety level of Indian railways. But very little has been done on that front. 
and to add to his point on middle class income this budget i believe would apply to robbing peter to pay, to pay paul. paul so one and the uh, union finance minister proposes the saving of 17500 rupees per person if they are to migrate to the new tax regime and uh, so this and she also claims that already a third of two third have migrated to the new regime so assuming they and people in the existing old regime they do not have any incentives and there is no hike or no incentive to them so assuming most of them or the remaining people are migrating to the new tax regime which does not give you any shops for savings it's for like housing or or uh, lic so so many other saving schemes which will incentivize and which will help you save money but that's available only only under the old regime imagine i'm a family of two or or uh, i and my wife and i have a school going child and i earn in the bracket of 10 lakhs or more two of us separately and if i were to save some money i would invest that money on a housing loan and the interest accrued would get me some income tax tax deduction benefits would if i were to migrate to the new regime would i well that no mm. definitely not and would i invest on a house no so much more harder so what you are so indirectly you are discouraging people from taking up savings like housing mm. or life insurance 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 policy so many other schemes absolutely and you want people to migrate to the new scheme where there are no tax rebates for any savings to so just to get your money pay the taxes and you have in remaining money invest in the market stock market and where you are imposing tax indirectly through short and long term gains tax yeah, okay. and you have already increased the capital gains there so well. you one one and you are giving me 17500 incentive But to migrate is. to the new regime and i don't have any saving i don't have to do engage in any saving to reduce on taxes so i would naturally prefer to invest in stock should i invest i have a tax on equities Fair and there you are taking away the tax benefit which you have given me in the new tax regime and why would how would there be savings and that too when the rbi its own report says that the fishmen the household savings has reduced to 47 year low absolutely and the consumer confidence is at the lowest now and how would people say and how would people invest under such a climate and compare this with the incentives you have given to the corporate and income tax this is probably this is for the first time so correct me if i'm wrong uh income tax accounts for more than the corporate tax i believe income tax accounts for 19% corporate tax accounts for 17% 17 to 8 17 uh, something rough is 17 and income tax is more than corporate tax and if you see the pattern how it has changed over the last for I many 10 years i show you some stats i have some stats to corroborate that uh the contribution of corporate tax to gross tax revenue has in, has a decreased decreased from 34.5 to 26.6 in the last 10 years between 2014 and 2023 oh. okay whereas income tax has increased income tax contribution to the gross tax revenue has increased from 20.8 to 30.9 mm. 10% jump in income tax contribution to the gross tax revenue so who are the income tax payers the common man most of them the middle class you refer absolutely to. so you are taking most of that money and you are incentivizing the corporates by the giving lesson? them 8.7 lakh tax benefit a waiver or reduction in tax in 5 years alone who does it benefit and you are also incentivizing employment and giving more to them in the form of employment eli employment link incentives absolutely. and subsidizing it to in, in, i mean enroll people esop and everything everything and that too when the demand is low absolutely so who does it benefit the corporate the rich the filthy rich as per this uh, world inequality lab which was released in march 2018 2024 march 2024 the top 1% of our company i mean country country owns account for i mean account for 22.1% of the country's income wealth and 40% of the wealth 40% of the wealth and 22.1% of the income is accounted for to the 1% top 1% of the country and you are again incentivizing them by reducing the corporate tax and the income tax share has gone up so you are literally robbing people to pay paul this is what has been happening all along and people have been begging you to, and you are doing this by stemming uh, stagnating the allocation to mnrg i'm glad you brought that up karthik because there was a tweet that i read this morning which said that 
the year's education budget is one lost opportunity, around 5,000 crores for education budget, which is actually lesser than the amount employed for marrying of one industrialist in our country. They're True, man. In the country, and so. MNREG, you ought to spend more. You See, this ever since its inception, MNREG had highest demand in June and uh, July 2023. So in June, July 23, the year ahead of the parliamentary election, the country had the maximum demand for MNREG. MNREGA is not a, a mere employment program. Hmm. It's a program to give money to the people. You cannot give, do it for free. See, there is a popular saying in economists. When the country's economy is not showing, what do you do? You just ask a, people, a group of people to dig a well. And what do you do? Pay them money. And what, what, what do you do next? You ask another group of people to fill that well and pay them money. <laughs> That's how you do it. You get, give money to the people so that the economy is churning. And that one such program is MNREG. Instead of giving paper money directly to the people for free, you engage them in some kind of, some kind of work. And this was a time where you are expected to extend MNREG to the urban centers. Absolutely. Instead, what did you do? You reduced the allocation. In the revised estimate of 2023-24, a uh, few months ahead of the parliamentary election, the MNREG allocation accounted for 1.92 percentage of the overall outlay. In the I mean, uh, full Revised budget estimate. presented now, it has been reduced to 1.78. And that too, when the demand is high, and you have given 25 lakh additional job costs to the people, and 5.8 crore people are already enrolled. Mm. And you have reduced the allocation, or either stabilized or reduced the allocation. How will it increase uh, consumption in the rural areas, which has been the real problem? Because the rural consumption is at the lowest. And instead of giving people money, you have reduced the allocation to MNREGA. What other jobs do we have? And already you have people migrating from um, agriculture to other sectors. Mm. As per the RBI report, you need to absorb at least 78.5 lakh people every year Correct. in non-farm jobs, non non -farm to, jobs to compensate for the exit from agriculture Absolutely. and also to keep I mean, uh, to I mean, stabilize unemployment rate. But whereas you your reduced allocation for MNREJ, which is a direct common compensation to MNREJ, uh, non I mean, farm job. How will this support the economy? You are not giving people money to the people. You are not going to raise economy, even I mean, increasing employment in the rural areas. And you are not giving money to the people. How will the economy turn? Absolutely. And you, by doing all this, and you expect the economy to keep going, and, and again, you are incentivizing the corporates. And that's why I said we have strived, failed to strike a balance between fiscal consolidation and political appeasement. You wanted to tax the rich. In fact, uh, it's interesting observation. Even the G20, they wanted a Absolutely. two percent cap uh, tax wealth to be tax. imposed on wealth tax to wealth be tax. imposed on the filthy rich, the super rich, uh, super rich. Every other country is doing it, and you are not willing to do it. And the only thing you came up with is a capital gains tax of two percent, two point five percent, and the long term and the short term a marginal increase. So even then, the market has already started bleeding. Honestly. And how will you sustain this? And meanwhile, what did you do? You want people to migrate to the new tax regime, the middle class, who are the real so, I mean, source of your economy, to pay you money. They want You want them to migrate to the new regime and reduce on their savings and invest on stock market probably and you are willing to tax them higher. Mm. So th th this is a classic case of the government having its priorities very skewed and also the, the budget lacking a vision, proper vision. It's a budget prepared in haste. The government has realized that uh, it is failure to address the problem of unemployment and inflation has cost them big time in many, many key areas, particularly Uttar Pradesh and Maharashtra and, other, and many other northern states where unemployment and price rise has cost them big time. Hmm. That in their hardcore Hindutva segments like Absolutely. UK. So they want to, they have acknowledged it, but their plans to remedy that have, have been, they've been found wanting on that front. So that's where I find this budget purely misminded. It's a mismatch between the expectation of the people and the deliverance or the delivery of the government. It's interesting that you mentioned that, Karthikeyan, because I wanted to also bounce it back to Koti. There's a lot of missed opportunities here in terms of welfare schemes. Yeah. Women and Child Ministry, all these ministries, their allocations have been just about nominal or even less than nominal as compared to the last years. Would you like to shed some light? Yeah, on see, uh, certainly, certain key areas, for example, uh, not only women and uh, children's welfare. You should also look at the agrarian crisis that the country is going through. And farmers have been protesting whether in uh, Jharkhand or Haryana or whatever. They've been demanding some basic 
uh, safety and security for their farm produce. But that has not been addressed in the budget, which is a huge setback for the farming community. And you have elections to five more states, which is coming. Correct. And uh, having the capital gains and the short-term gains, the market will be under volatile situation for the next six months. That is for sure. Because uh, the elections are there and the taxations has been high. And if you see also the agrarian crisis, uh, you should also think about the marine industry. For mm -hmm. example, uh, the cost of a shrimp feed and certain aquaculture uh, produce, the, the farm produce, is the tax has been cut down. So they say the cost of the seafood will come down. But when you talk to the fishermen, they say, no, no, this is for, again, for corporates who breed uh, and export shrimps to foreign countries. This is not the local fish which you are going to get, the prawn which you are going to eat, the cost is going to come down. The diesel subsidy or any SOPs for the fishermen who go into the catamaran or into the trawlers. So we don't get gain much of this. So this is only going to benefit people who export uh, marine farm produce from this country to elsewhere. So this is the understanding right now the, the, uh, the government is having. Another example will be about one, one huge area which they have failed to address is about the uh, government sector uh, uh, employees. Okay. Because they have been talking about uh, pension, safety Correct. and uh, revival and certain sort, sort, sort of vacancies are there in the government. You are not filling up the vacancies, whether it is railways or telecom sector or public sector banking. So they have been protesting or demanding certain things. And they say there is a scope because we public sector companies every year our uh, revenues are increasing and we are giving a record dividend to the government. So we are making profits. Why don't you treat us in a better way? That has been the, the government sector has been asking. They say uh, it is time for the government to get into these issues and address the same. So whether it is LAC or uh, the, the port seaport activity or airports or rail network, all these are completely the country's wealth, which indirectly uh, not only benefits the government, they are also the nerve center of the common man, the public. So there is completely uh, nothing coming in these areas. Mm -hmm. Only the asset monetization is being spoken about where the privatization is, seems to be the policy rather than involving the public. As Karthik rightly pointed out, the concept of uh, Menraga is not to see the, the best of it. It is to ensure that the worst poverty or the poverty alleviation is eradicated at the grassroots level. Mm. Certain schemes or freebies or projects are here to give that basic, uh, the uh, what do you say, the absorption effect from the market, the inflation, stability, all those things. So I think uh, from a tax point of view or from a, a normal economic point of view, this might say for the finance minister is a tight rope whopping the fiscal deficit from 5.1, it has come down to 4.9. So maybe down the line, uh, six to seven years, we will have a budget where uh, everything will be balanced. That is the estimate versus the revenue generation will sure. be under balance. But this two to three percent, the taxpayers and the middle class, <laughs> what is going to happen to them? They are finding it difficult to breathe. Mm. So uh, it's there's no not one instrument. For example, uh, a person, the, the normal idea of a common man or a middle class would be to become little rich. And those venues are completely closed. Even people who understand taxation and the, how the budget works are finding it difficult. And there are some 90% of the people who won't even understand the budget. How the budget works. About right. the budget, how, what is going to be the consequences, what is going to be the impact. See, for example, I'm buying a gold, paying GST. Then after certain years, the person who went in, again, he has to pay a tax. Understood. So what is this concept? Most of the, uh, 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 is uh, Gulf, for example, they, they, are, they, are, they have the rich owners there, everybody, but the, the jewelry or the cost is not that high. So we are collecting tax, something like the first world countries, like taxes on equivalent with uh, Britain or US or Japan or uh, Saudi, but things the, like that. But the utilities but, are uh, not. Utilities, Switzerland, certain key areas, you, our taxation is something equivalent to Switzerland. Do you want to say that the roads in Switzerland and the roads in India are the same? Not at all. No. So where exactly the taxpayer's money is going? So that's a big know. question that awaits answer. All right. On a closing note, I think probably it's important to ask. We've been very critical of the budget. We have been kind of lambasting the government for what it did wrong and where it could have corrected. Was there anything in the budget that you were actually encouraged by? Was there something which was a sort of, a, let's say, a green signal or a, you know, a light at the end of the tunnel kind of a thing? So one thing know? is about the... As Karthik said, they have admitted the problem of unemployment in this country, which is like uh, more than 15% in urban areas and somewhere around more than 20% in rural areas. And this number keeps changing. So they have promised certain schemes. For example, this bringing under the 
uh, EPFO linked schemes will encourage some small private uh, players to absorb people on payrolls rather than on the contract basis. So when you see on the record, you will say, okay, this many people have joined new jobs. Then they have been talking about uh, providing internship for the youngsters so that people get more uh, skilled and they are uh, ready madely available for the job opportunities and things like that. But the biggest question is that this is a country where we are not able to conduct exams properly. Mm. The Chief Justice of this country, Chandra Chud, is every day like is is finding it so difficult and embarrassing to give out a solution. He's, he's a man of uh, uh, thoughts and uh, great, integrity. Uh, great integrity. So whether to say the exam is valid or not, the exam is valid. Whether to allow the uh, re-examination or to cancel the examination. This is the kind of embarrassment this particular government has given to the judiciary. So when, when your entire examination model is under scrutiny, when the leader of the opposition says that this is the biggest fraud on the uh, students, and we are talking about internship. Yeah. I'm talking about the courses and the examination. They're talking about the internship. Karthik, how would you like to add to it? Is there anything that you'd like to say on a closing note in terms of something that worked for you in the budget and something where there's an opportunity for change, for betterment in the next coming budget, maybe? Probably they can rework on their policies and uh, it's not sufficient to merely acknowledge the problems. They can, they can build on whatever they have proposed. But you made a mention of uh, CapEx. But there's a serious problem with CapEx in uh, They have pegged it as 11.11 .11 crores, right? And they're claiming claim credit for it to have increased from 9.3 billion or something. But where does most of it, the money come from? It more comes mostly from your dividends and surpluses from public institutions like RBI or LIC. And if you if you can invest, if you can get most of it, in fact, uh, one figure puts it at, uh, it, uh, and this dividend and surplus from, it has rose, risen from 39,000 or roughly 40,000 crore in uh, two years ago, and it's expected to cross 2.32 lakh crores. Wow. So you'll get most of it. The government missed most of it, and that's how they balance their sheets. And you get so much money, and that's how you there will be a massive influx of capital expenditure. And most of it is going to support the corporates. Why not to pump in that same money for, for PSUs, profit, at least profit-making PSUs, to increase the capex? Fair enough. You're not doing it. What is the problem? So why cannot at least well, the government at least consider that? That's where the, the problem seems to be. Your concerns, the, earlier they believed in this trickle-down economy uh, effect. They believed that if the more the money, the pump into corporates, the benefits will accrue and it will slowly trickle down to the lay people. It never happened. And again, you are going to pump in a ma massive amount of money, 11.11 .11 lakh crores. It's a big sum. And again, it will go into corporate sector. Of Fair course, enough. a good bit of it will go into infrastructure, but why, can, why cannot you do, you do it at least for profit-making PSUs, public sector and You're not doing it. And you are proposing a program of incentivizing or subsidizing employment uh, network with EPFO, subscription. And there is a caveat in that. And uh, any employer, employee enrolled pro for that program Within should continue for a, for a year. Correct. What is the guarantee that he, the person will not get sacked in the 13th month? Absolutely. Because only the employer has to return that money only if he gets sacked in the 12th month. Very or true. Or any time before 12th. Correct. If he gets sacked on the 13th month, do you have a program to That's protect pro him? Absolutely. There is definitely no guarantee. And splitting, you are borrowed. And, and, and one thing that I can really appreciate about this budget is their willingness to accept ideas. Understood. It doesn't matter if it is from the Congress manifesto. You have accepted it. You have embraced their idea of incentivizing youth enrollment into the job sector, into the job market. Good. You have accepted, I borrowed their idea. Good. But how are you going to refine that idea and improve upon it? That is where the, I mean, they are lacking a vision. That's where the, the, the government must have paid more attention to it. And coming to Tamil Nadu or other states, of course, your government hinges on the support of Chandra Babu Naidu or Nitish Kumar. But what, what is your solution to the flood problems of Tamil Nadu or Kerala? Mm. Or for that matter, uh, Telangana, Karnataka. We are in a state where the state of affairs in India is such that the state government has to move the Supreme Court to borrow money, mm. Kerala did it. To get drought relief, Karnataka had to move the Supreme Court. Tamil Nadu is also moving the Supreme Court to get flood relief. All this in a time of climate change. All this in the time of climate change and that too, a Prime Minister who brags about being a champion of climate change, mm. in Paris summit or Kyoto summit, whatever the nonsense, 
but this man doesn't allocate funds for states which suffered severe natural disasters in the last one year and they had to invariably move to the Supreme Court to get that money. On the other hand, you are giving extra money or special packages to states or parties, or states ruled by parties that are supporting your government. You have a special flood program for Kosi flooding hmm. in Bihar and you have a program for a flood program for Uttarakhand ruled by BJP and Himachal Pradesh which was ruled by you till a year ago. So why can't you have a similar I mean, focus similar focus with Tamil Nadu or Kerala or Karnataka? Do they not belong to India? Are they not part of India? At least on the disaster relief front you are saying. Exactly. So the no question sure. of financial autonomy or democratizing the resources of the country is at stake. So th this is where the government has uh, failed miserably trying to strike a balance between the two, they stand exposed. It's obvious this budget is presented to only save the government and to get some amount of goodwill ahead of uh, the five state elections or at least three states, Maharashtra, Jharkhand and uh, Haryana. So you're trying to get into the damage control mode, but you have been found wanting. And now everyone is finding fault with it, but you still want credit for it. <laughs> so, so this is... Only thing is their willingness to accept ideas Definitely. from the opposition and maybe some policies, they can they can improve on it, they can work on it. Fair enough. They might help the economy and keep the cycle churning, but they need to do more, uh, not by reducing the allocation for uh, uh, MNRH. In fact, it's not just MNRH. Do you know that they have reduced allocation for food security? Act, food food security. security. I heard that. They have reduced it by 7,000 crore. Even the portion act, I believe. Uh, the it's been reduced by 7,000 crore after you promised to give feed food grains to 81 crore people for the next five years. It's been reduced by 5,000 7,000 crore between the revised estimate and the main budget now. The midday meal scheme also has been taken a hit, right? Uh, and that's uh, taken a hit. I'm talking about the PDS supply. Okay. So the, even there, you have reduced the allocation contrary to the promise you made in the poll. Fair the whole campaign. So this is these are areas the government needs to address. There cannot be hunger deaths. People need to get. That's where people have been advising. Even the great Amartya Sen has been advising the union government to emulate Tamil Nadu model of universal PDS. So no one gets left behind. There is no hunger death. The, the targeted targeted PDS does not work for a develop, I mean, developing economy like India. Amartya Sen proposes universal PDS and he wants the rest of the states to emulate Tamil Nadu's model of universal PDS. That will ensure that there is no hunger death. Fair and everyone, even the last person is, I mean, taken care of. Mm -hmm. So that is where this government is paying, is failing to pay attention to. And the, the, these are the areas they can improve on. They, they can focus on rural employment and influence, infusing money into the rural economy and uh, ensuring direct benefit of transfer at least. In the, in the absence of job, at least I mean, ensure that there is direct, direct benefit of transfer, cash, so that people will consume, increase the consumption. The food inflation for the month ending June was 9.5%. We it. all know how much this, a kilogram of vegetable, you know, tomato and cost now. Completely. Inflation. It's close to 80. And we actually forgot to talk about inflation. Yes, <laughs> food inflation is at the highest now. A kilogram of toma tomato costs 90, 80 rupees. And this is an area, and you have come up with a new formula to I mean, fudge your numbers. That doesn't help. The, when you draw a comparison between the wholesale price index and the retail inflation, the numbers are showing. You claim to be 1.5 percent, whereas it is the retail inflation showing us 5.4. How does it? How does it mismatch happen? Absolutely. The numbers are different. The government must address it. People are suffering. Mere, mere fudging of numbers does not help. Go talk to the people on the on the road. Yes. Ask the household woman or a man who buys the grocery. Ask them how much a kilogram of tomato costs. It's 80 rupees. The numbers are telling. You cannot cheat them. Absolutely. So that is an area where you have must address. You talk about increasing the income of farmers. Our the budget promises long term production. Do I mean uh, packages to or ideas to promote long term agricultural production. Yeah. What happened to the legal guarantee on MSP? Absolutely. That's been the demand of the farmers for the last two years. And we had a huge I mean, stir yeah, for that. Stir for that, and 800 people died in the cold winter of Delhi. And they have been demanding all along, and they are still demanding legally guaranteed MSP. Whereas you come up with the idea called production incentive or long-term production augmentation program. How does it help for a farmer who is demanding more money for his produce or a legal guarantee for MSP? You are proposing a program to increase production in the long run. He is talking about his immediate future to feed for the bread and butter of his kids. You are talking about a future production. 
target and there is no pandemic readiness also because you See, mentioned covid no. season one thing to supplement to that they have been demanding not only the msp madam finance minister has assured about digital intervention into agriculture community to make it more uh, globally uh, on global standards uh, global right. standards here not only in kaveri delta region whenever there is a heavy rains you don't have a good home or a safety place to protect these grains Fair enough. that is the kind of condition right now the farmers are there and they are talking about digital intervention for them mm-hmm. so there's a poor understanding i would say on that note i think we've had a covered a vast gamut of viewpoints and subjects and uh, we try to address the budget as best as possible our two experts here have kind of given us uh, not exactly a thumbs up there is obviously a lots of room for improvement we are hoping that next time around probably ms sitaraman and company can kind of you know take cognizance of viewpoints like these and see what's really the situation on the ground in terms of what's the ground reality and we hope that you know next time around we have a lot more reason to cheer on that note thank you so much mr kotishan for joining us and mr kartikeyan thank you for spending your valuable time with us i really hope you had a good time listening to us and you know um, you know sharing in their viewpoints and we look forward to seeing you soon good day to you